Welcome to Whiskey Vault. I'm Daniel. Uh, I am Brax. It's Rare Whiskey Friday. It's Rare Whiskey Friday. And you know what? You, you, you showed up, you brought the heat, you memorized it. Mm -hmm. We're all very proud of you. She show off a little bit. She get oh, in. you want me to do it again? She get in there. Welcome to Rare Whiskey Friday. We're gonna taste our way through a few whiskeys. I'm adding a little personal interpretation. No, 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 you, no, this is not what's happening at all. I you, forgot. You it. forgot it. <laughs> <laughs> why you gotta why you gotta call me like that? <laughs> they may or may not be whiskeys. I really did right now because I haven't been thinking about it. In mid forget. I'm searching back to the part of my head where I have it memorized. In mid forget. And I didn't have time you for realize it. You realize you panic <laughs> yeah. and then you, you know you're gonna make shit I'm up. I'm going for the personal interpretation. Wait, wait, wait. Put my own little spin on it, just so just, you know. Just so you know. <laughs> so we're gonna drink, you may or may not be able to get these whiskeys in you, your area. Right. Uh, sometimes they're big brands, more often than not, they're craft releases without a lot of distribution. If you should be so lucky as to live in an area where you can get one of these, you're welcome for the review. And thank you to the magnificent bastard who sent it, in this case, Dewey Kinchin. Dewey Kinchin, you magnificent bastard. <laughs> Uh, I'm already kind of excited on this little hang tag thing. Southern Pot Still Pioneers. So this is a Pot Still Whiskey. Yeah, this is ASW. We reviewed them recently and really loved their stuff. This is Georgia, right? Nice. Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah. yeah. So here's the thing. This is, Dewey wrote a note, and uh, this is kind of cool. Love the Whiskey Tribe. Thanks for things. Yes, thank you, Dewey. Uh, type 2 Diabetic. Worked really hard to drop almost 100 pounds so he could get off insulin and all the pills he needed to take. Yeah. Low carb diet was a goal, but he found himself not being able to have beer or wine without guilt or extra exercise. And then he discovered whiskey is effectively low carb. What? We're, That's true. We're, it's a health channel. Everything he knew about whiskey was from negative experiences, but he came across our beginner whiskey video, and now he's got more than 80 bottles and been told by a certain member of the household that it equals a few mortgage payments. <laughs> <laughs> he really loves this one because he really loves... Right. Uh, no, no. His favorite scotch is Highland Park 12. He has Ardbeg, Lafroy, Talisker Storm. Yeah. But he's not really a peat guy. Highland Park's a great whiskey. But he likes this one. Yeah. So this is the um, ASW Distillery Scottish Pot Still style. Mm -hmm. Two-row malt, Munich malt, and cherry smoked malt and chocolate malt. You had me at Pot Still. Pour the damn whiskey. I'm trying to get the top of this thing. Okay. 100%. It uses, uh, it uses the remainder um, heads and tails from a, another peated release. Oh, interesting. It's more subtle than I was expecting on It that. is really subtle. So the only smoke in this, in theory, is the 15% cherry smoked malt. Okay. And the heads and tails of a previous 100% peated run. Okay. Thrown into the next distillation. Yeah. Which is a really, it's a slight, really creative idea. Slight rubber note on the nose. I, I really want to go into that idea that these guys just presented, but this is oh, where yeah. Whiskey Friday and it's too long. But it's super nerdy brilliant. All right, say it's it never occurred to me. In the 15 second version. When you distill, you take head cuts, keep the heart, take the tail cuts. So you end up with the heart cuts going to barrels and the heads and tails go into a tank. Now, if you're a distillery making the same thing over and over and over and over, you take those and you dump them in the next distillation to add to the volume, and then you make the same cuts again. They took the heads and tails from a different product ah. and dumped it into the run for this product. I see what you so did So you there. got a low wines influence, right. effectively, a low wines influence on a new run. So that is really interesting You to have me. to go to this nose multiple times because every time you go back, it builds a little bit more. You start to get a little bit, you start to become a little bit more receptive to what's in here. I'm getting more and more of that chocolate malt. The I've, more I go back, first it was all that light peat and the well, barley. So beyond just the specific notes, the thing that's kind of trippy is my first approach, mm -hmm. I'm getting now after several approaches to the nose, fully double the amount that I was getting in that first approach. Oh yeah. You have to keep going back. First approach was really mild and, and subdued. It's now. Yeah. Wow. And it, they, uh, it's kind of like, like a charred, ashy, slight rubber note with this sweet, what is the sweetness here? 
Oh, they did just the feints of the hell. We did tire fire. Oh, we did tire fire. And we that's what we did, tire fire. Right. And we liked the idea. We liked everything about it except for how boring the label was. Oh, yeah. For the word tire fire. I am really oh. loving this nose. I'm going to have a hard time moving on to the other things, except for I know what's well, over I'm there. Trying to, I'm trying to put a pin in what the sweetness is, though, because I'm getting some char. It's on. chocolate. It's dark chocolate. It's not milk chocolate. It's a slightly bitter dark chocolate. I'm getting like the slightest little fruit. I, I, not, to push, well, not, not to push back on your chocolate. It's malt. Okay, there's chocolate. You think? All right, I'm going in. Oh, that's, that's good. Ooh. That's subtle. No, no, no. And nuanced, and it's a little more honey and clingy than I thought it was going to be on the nose. Yeah. This is like a whole other league. And then it just feels like it just kind of rolls down really soft. I really and want to compare it to Tire Fire because and... I remember we liked Tire Fire. Oh, 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 Daniel. What? It's got that nut finish. I know. I was about to say that. The nut finish. No, though. this is, it, you know what it is? I'm convinced it's the chocolate malt. If we want to create something with that finish that you love, we're going to need to indulge in some chocolate malt. Nut finish. Ah, oh, that's good. It's really nice. This is an exercise. Well done, this is an exercise in like um, complex yet subtle layers. Yeah. Yeah, nothing in here is like punching you in the face. Right. But there's a lot of things going on. Yeah. It's not boring. Yeah, yeah. But it's not abrasive or loud. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I like that. Mm. That's good. This is an exercise in subtlety. Like me. I mean, yeah, to totally. Hi. <laughs> Man, that's, I'm really impressed by that. Okay. I think Daniel likes it. I do like it. Why do I we... really want to come back to it blind and see if I still feel Why the same way Why do we have a brown it? Sharpie? Uh, I was using it to write notes on something. But why brown? And I lifted it up there. Nobody has brown. I was drawing pictures of turds. <laughs> So I knew that would make you laugh. It's the only reason I'm ever crude. This is actually this is actually true. The, o the only reason I'm ever crude. This is just so out of character. Is because I I know it will make Rex laugh. It's just it might, uh, there is a movie called Super Bad. Yeah. And um, uh, what was it Jonah Hill? His character is his kid. He just drew dicks all day, every day. All the time. Yeah, and yeah. his teacher who <laughs> came by and found him drawing all these dicks. It's like, I couldn't stop myself. I'm just drawing dicks, all kinds of dicks. Yeah, it was pretty good. <laughs> I just imagine you drawing turds. And yeah, it's like, everywhere. <laughs> this is Trey Coons, a magnificent bastard. Trey Coons, you magnificent bastard. Oh, that's so, really I've been cool. wanting to try this on camera for a while. This is very important. Yeah. Because we have done countless whiskeys at this point. Yeah. Ne I've never dropped a bottle with the whole flinging around. Yeah. It's never happened. Yeah. But I grabbed it with the left hand, oh. already precarious. You had just poured some There's drippage some drippage on the side. So my, my the up. shaft situation right here, yeah. the shaft situation, very precarious. It almost yeah. went flying. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Balconis, yeah. with whom we have multiple professional relationships and friendships. Yeah. But. So. We like the hell out of what they're doing before we ever knew them personally. Yeah. So, but we still know them personally now. So we're gonna try and be super objective, but just know that. Yeah. So look at what the front of that is. Texas Bach. Okay. A collaboration with Shiner Bach. Oh. oh right. Oh, so the Shiner. now here's why I really love this. They didn't just say, "Hey, Shiner, can we fill a bear right. barrel with beer and then finish it?" You send a Shiner and then we'll distill no, it no. and call it a day. No, no, whole other level. Okay. They took the recipe. For Shiner, yeah, the exact recipe, and made a malt whiskey from it. Okay. The malt recipe for Shiner. Yeah. They took that recipe and made a whiskey, and then they aged it for two years. They sat on it for two years. Okay. This right. Is, well, two years in Texas, you can get a lot of color there. Yeah, and also the same yeast strain that Shiner uses. I'm getting a really, like a a honey hay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like a a. a like yeah, like agricultural honey, dried hay, like a honeyed cereal, like a breakfast cereal. It's like not honey, not honey uh, not Cheerios. Cheerios. No, no, yeah. no. But like a honey coated cereal type. This is a very different bottling than what Balconis has done today. I was gonna say, never smelled anything like this from Balconis well, ever if, before. You know, we're, uh, we've had some conversations with them because it was like I don't know, two, three years ago. 
It's like, man, every time I pour a Balcones, no matter what category you're going for, there is a signature, there's a signature style and note. It's like, oh, yeah. that's a Balcones. But recently with the lineage. Oh, totally different ballgame. Totally game. different ballgame. And, and taking the world by storm right now. Yeah, yeah. Showing up on top 10 lists everywhere. Basically, if you like tropical fruits and whiskeys, which is really hard to find whiskey. Yeah then the lineage is beautiful tropical fruits in there. It's, this is another one color, coloring far outside the lines of uh, traditional Balcones bottlings. Lineage is the best thing that's happened out of Balcones and from my palate since Mirador. Okay. I, I didn't think anything could top Mirador for me. All yeah. the releases of Mirador. Yeah. But lineage totally fights with it as my one of my favorite so Balcones I think, products. I think, I think probably my favorite Balcones, which is underrated in my opinion, okay. is the French oak. The frog. The frog. Yeah, I like I get that. I like the hell all out the of the spice. Frog. I like the, the yeah. hell out of the frog, and people like it. But I think other things get more attention. Uh, to your point, getting back into this, there are all still some fruit notes in here. Oh, this is. Yeah, there's some grin, like some, almost granola. Yeah. Yeah, but you know that's what I was thinking. I was thinking of the honey coated chunks of granola. Yeah, but not like the granola in the. Uh, you know what it is? It's that hipster um, open air market granola. Yeah, when you, and it's clumped up yeah. in chunks. Yeah, it's not the kind you get in like the squares prepackaged, mm -hmm. you open it up. Mm -mm. There's there's hippies Ooh. involved. Ooh, try that again, there's, that's unique. Oh yeah. It if I had said, I'm sorry, go ahead. It delivers what I'm expecting from the nose, yeah. but then there's like this another depth to it. If I had said this was a beer base yeah. recipe, would you have ever bought it? We mean buy it in terms of what's in the glass? Yeah. Because I'm not finding it. Like, no. I, I'm finding... It doesn't come across as beery. No. No. No, not at all. It, I, 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 there is a lot of commonalities that I have found in a lot of craft whiskeys in the States. That kind of, that rich honey hay granola. Um, but I think this is a presentation that seems a little bit more cooked and saturated than what I typically find with those notes, which is typically an American craft note. Um, I will say it's sweeter than I typically prefer from Balcones. Sweeter, okay. Yeah, just, just pure sweetness is a little sweeter than I prefer. Mm. It's a sweetie. Is, this, is it a heavy handed honey? Oh, we're still, I'm sorry. Oh, this is where we're Son Friday. of a bitch. Sorry. Sorry. Look, look how much time we're Sorry. Burning. Sorry, Dan. <laughs> sorry, Dan. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, well, we're going to follow that up with one that I'm totally nervous about drinking. First impressions or full on reviews. So remember the dude that um, did his own show, Redneck, making his own moonshine in the hills and moonshiners, and it was on like the Discovery Channel. I've heard they, of moonshiners. The guy roams around with the But I, I was like one of the first people to cut the cord. So yeah. If it's, yeah. So, this is his whiskey, uh, and it's their moonshine okay. with chunks of charred wood floating in it. Okay. For flavoring. Sure. And so that's well, Tim uh, Smith. Tim Smith's, so you keep moving the thing, century old whiskey recipe aged with toasted oak, wood imparting color, mm -hmm. and revolutionary flavors. Made to be in a class of its own. Okay. Yeah, the whole idea of the show was originally like, you're going to follow these moonshiners who are totally doing something illegal <laughs> and show them on TV while not letting them get arrested. How'd that work? I, I, they're not arrested. Okay. So it worked. Yeah. So if we ever do anything sketchy, we but moonshiners. Yeah, we need to find whoever produced moonshine. Actually, those are the guys who... Uh, approached us for a, that new show that one time. Oh, is it? It was they. It was Tim Smith and oh, yeah, nice. anyway. Oh, this is uh, actual grain feed mixed with. I'm getting like a nice charred note in there. Mixed with charred actual charred campfire wood. Yeah, yeah, definitely. The charred note is the thing that's outstanding for me. It actually smells like liquid smoke. Like I was getting more like like a, a version of liquid smoke. See, I was just doing. Like I was over at Brushwood's place. Yeah. Um, I was with Andrew Heaton. We were just Andrew, hanging. the guy who should be British, and then he talks. He's not British. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then we we were doing like a campfire over mm -hmm. at his place, um, and this is the campfire note because the wind was throwing everywhere. Oh yeah. And it kept hitting me, and that's the campfire note that I kept getting. But I keep coming back to it. it's it's barnyard grain. Barnyard grain. Behind that. 
Okay. Yeah. So you see what I mean? Yeah. This is like an agricultural, not granola. There's not enough sweetness. No, no, no. There's not enough sweetness for a granola. No, no. I almost mean like sunflower seeds out of the seed, out of the uh, shell. Oh, so, okay. Like just yeah, yeah, yeah. raw grain nut type. Yeah. Ready? Mmm. Actually, sunflower seeds is the most accurate. Oh. Yeah. It's a it's a sunflower seed whiskey with a veneer of char. smoke and char. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not bad. No, it's not no bad. No faults, just... It is 45% ABV. It almost smells like peanut butter now that I go back to the it. The finish, though, is... Got, it's got like a caramel peanut. Mm-hmm. Is that caramel? I think it's caramel. Like a caramel peanut finish? Caramel or honey peanut. Yeah, the other way, it's a sweet, dusted, sugary peanut. And then it eventually turns into a vanilla. So usually whenever people are throwing in like chunks of wood and stuff, and it's going to be kind of harsh, and it's like it's not harsh or abrasive. No, it's not harsh or And abrasive. the flavors are nice. They're pleasant flavors. You know what this makes me think? Mm. So I've got cousins who swear by like apple pie is this Is this hard to get? I, I don't think so. Well, why is it not another thing? Because, I don't know. Okay. Oh, by the way, Rob Kane gave this to us. Rob Kane, you magnificent bastard. <laughs> anyway, I got cousins who are like apple pie moonshine and like cherry cola moonshine and mm -hmm. all the flavored things. And they just guzzle it because it tastes like candy. This could easily be a transition for people like my cousin into actual whiskey flavors while sliding in the door through the moonshine to its gap. credit to its credit there's there's a youngness to all of this yeah let me say that there's a youngness to all of this but on second approach um now i'm getting a peanut brittle yeah a flash of vanilla yeah so there's complexity here yeah there are things it's, happening it's a young whiskey um but there are multiple things going on it's not abrasive it's not harsh and for like a moonshine type of execution damn Right? Yeah. Gateway Moonshine. All right, this is a gift from Dalen Hawkins, Magnificent Bastard. Dalen Hawkins, you Magnificent Bastard. So he said, hey, this is Scratch Edmund's own whiskey. Single barrel straight whiskey made from Skagit Valley grains. Uh, so these guys are in Washington okay. State, right? Um, spelt, millet, Wheat and barley. Like, this is the weirdest grain mash bill Wait, we've ever tasted. In order of the ratio? Uh, I don't know, but it's got spelt, millet, wheat, and barley in it. Right. And... Uh, wheat and barley, okay, but usually whenever... Th whenever and people, all local grain. Usually whenever you have ingredients listed, the dominant ingredients are listed first. Yeah, in a recipe on the back of a label, right. legally, yeah. So I'd be curious yeah. to know how much spelt and millet... He also sent us a barrel aged gin, but uh, we're not gonna review it on the show. Look, dude, if I start opening the door to non whiskey things just because people sent it, w our lives will never be able to go back to normal someday. Just send it to me. Just send it direct because like he opens it, drinks half a bottle, and then shows it no, on no, camera no, no, no. two months later. Do, 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 do. That was sent specifically to me. Mm -hmm. Like, do you want me to go to your house mm -hmm. and see how many things mm -hmm. you should have shared with me? Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, I don't know where he lives. That's true. Because <laughs> I moved, yeah. He's very consciously not invited me. Oh, this is hard candy, sweet candy mixed with it that new very sweet. grain, new bar, new oats, new... So, malty, sweet, but also like a root beer hard candy. Yeah, root beer is the right one. It's root beer. Yeah. It really is. You know what it reminds me of? Remember those wax things shaped like bottles? And you would bite into them and they had like the root beer syrup inside? Uh, so I'm, I know what you're saying, but I'm saying you go to the Texas Landy Cattle Company and then they have like a bowl of the mm -hmm. root beer hard candies. They look yeah. like barrels. Oh yeah, I've not tried those. Yeah, yeah. This is just yeah. hard candy tastes a lot like root beer. And this is kind of my point. Oh, it's kind of nice. Yeah. It's approachable. A little sweet. A little sweet. It's almost all sugar. No real other tannins or very sugar, very sugary. Mm-hmm. It's a little thin. Yeah. Not a lot of big heavy body. No, and I'm not right. getting a lot of wood impact, even though it looks like it. It's it's a a sweet, desserty, light, bright whiskey, and it's very uh, drinkable, very approachable. They say they won double gold best of 40, in Northwest. Forty-one point five. Forty-one point five. 
Best of the Northwest from SIP Northwest. Yeah. So a local regional competition. Yeah. They won double gold, best of. Yeah. And uh, I would I would guess it's because it's so unoffensive, yeah. so perfectly drinkable. Right. Well, and honestly, this is where it absolutely comes down to. <laughs> Who's on the judging panel? Do you have like local business owners who yeah. want to participate in Someone a community from the local event. news station? Right. The weather dude. <laughs> if it's that, then just make it as sweet and easy and friendly as possible. Mm -hmm. And then if you get like actual like whiskey makers and whiskey nerds in there, now you're going to go for some depth. You're going to go yeah. for some drama. Know so. your judging panel. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but I, I like it. I like the... It, it, there, there is a uniqueness to that sweetness, though. Go back and smell the one we just did, and look how peanut brittle that is. I just pure said, peanut brittle. Wait, 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 did I say peanut? Did I? No, no, you did. did. That's what I'm saying. Did I like say, your last tasting did note? Did I say Daniel? Is the only thing did, that's left. Did I say it? Your last tasting note is the only thing that's left in that glass. I won. I was looking for the burns, but I here it is, and I drank it all. <laughs> Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight me, I fight for a friend. You steal me, you steal your liver. And if you drink, may you drink with us. The bottle, Lord. The bottle, where are you going? Oh, we got the thing that says. Jeff was no was was gigi. Was was no was kiss 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 kiss